So um, welcome to the Servant Leadership and Community Service session hosted by myself and Caitlin Kant. Um, so we'll get started with some introductions. Uh, my name is Kate Sosolski. I go by Katie Sosolski. I graduated from Kansas State in 2022. I was initiated at the Zix chapter at Kansas State, and I was the vice president of service. So I feel like I had a great role in engaging my chapter in service, and I'd love to share some of that experience with you all today. And I'm currently a law student in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I will pass it over to Caitlin. My name is Caitlin. I graduated from Illinois State University in May. Um, I was a biology and a psychology double major. I was initiated into mortar board in 2021. I was from the Red Tassel chapter. I initially served my first year as vice president and treasurer, and then I moved into the president's role my super senior year. I was also part of the conference advisory board last year and this year. And I am starting as a section coordinator for region four this year. And I was um, able to attend the national conference, both in person last year, as well as the virtual one from two years ago. Great, thank you, Caitlin. So let's get started by talking about what servant leadership is. So I think a lot of us are attuned to know what that word leadership means. And a lot of people in this conference probably have formal leadership roles, um, especially because you're probably on your exec board for mortar board. And we want to emphasize that that is certainly one type of leadership, and it's probably the most stereotypical, but leadership is more than a title. And so that's kind of what we're getting into during this session. So today we're going to talk about servant leadership and practicing uh, leadership through service. Typically, servant leadership will flip typical power dynamics that exist in leadership so that anyone can be a leader. And also that leadership can be exercised by serving others, as opposed to a leader being someone who is served by other people who do the work. So this is crucial to the mortarboard pillars um, of leadership and service. And each chapter finds unique ways to exercise these concepts, but today we wanna to give you a foundation so that you can take this model to your chapter and make sure that you're practicing a form of ethical leadership and service when you do so. So what is servant leadership? Servant leadership is a philosophy where a leader is a servant first. Servant leaders aspire to serve their team and the organization first ahead of personal objectives. It's a selfless leadership style where a leader possesses a natural feeling to serve for the greater good. As the executive board, your team has a great opportunity to set the tone for your year as collegiate members. Some ways that you can encourage servant leadership are to think of the group as a circle rather than a pyramid, delegate important tasks like planning and decision-making to non-elected members, and serve the communities that your members are stakeholders in. This type of leadership is hard. It's likely hard for most of us to let go of the projects we love, but it's important to give your entire chapter an opportunity to lead from within the organization. In the same way, it's crucial for everyone in your group, regardless of position, to engage in the service. Servant leadership means that no one is above doing the work. These are some examples of past service projects done at some other chapters. So we've done in the past a Midwest Food Bank, Career Closet, Book Drives, a LinkedIn workshop, Habitat for Humanity, Earth Day initiatives, Turkey Basket Drive, COVID awareness projects, the list can go on and on. One project that my chapter did was the Habitat for Humanity. For this project, a group of us volunteered to work with a nonprofit organization, Habitat for Humanity, and they actually built houses from scratch for uh, members of the community that can afford housing. And so we would all get together on a weekend and we would actually help to build a house. So it was a really great um, project that we got to do as a group, and it was for a really good cause, and we actually got to meet the families that we were building houses for. Great, thank you, Caitlin. And as I mentioned, feel free to drop some service projects that your chapter has done in the past, um, or maybe not even more toward service projects, but other things that have really been inspiring to you as a servant leader. 
So now um, we've created a resource to kind of help out. So we're going to go through this a little bit, but we wanted to highlight what service might look like at different chapters. A lot of chapters have recurring service events or perch projects that they engage in yearly, and they're usually known on campus pretty well, and there's a lot of history. Um, and we think that's incredible, but we also know that some chapters struggle to create new ideas and plan service events, and every year they're kind of coming up with something new. Uh, other chap some chapters have requirements too. So like Caitlin's chapter, there was a service hour requirement. So every member of the chapter had to do 10 hours of the community service. Uh, my chapter, we didn't have a strict requirement, but we made sure to host some sort of service engagement every month. And then we asked members to participate at least once a semester, since we know that everyone's busy. Um, and so you can choose how your chapter practices service. Uh, do keep in mind that the national project is reading is leading. So every chapter, and this will be in your chapter action plan, and you'll hear from us about this throughout the year, but every chapter should engage in a reading is leading service project, um, some sort of way to increase literacy and do work around reading. So that's exciting. Feel free to drop more ideas for reading is leading in the chat as well. So when thinking about planning a service event, we've created this resource to help with that process. So this document is divided into four main parts, which kind of flow in order. First, you have to find the purpose behind your project. So there's a list of questions to ask yourself when you're planning an event. There are a few on this list. I think they're all important, but it's great. I wanna especially highlight um, identifying service recipient needs and leveraging partnerships. So I think it's crucial to consider the needs of the community that you want to serve. I think a lot of projects just come up with an idea of what a community needs, but I think it's great to really use community experts in that community, especially if you're working outside of a community than your own, um, which I think a lot of service projects do. So for example, I remember a past service project um, where a chapter hosted a book drive to donate books to a community in another country. And after some reflection, the group realized that the project probably missed the mark because they were collecting books from one community to donate them to another community that didn't really share language, cultural values, and other commonalities that you might find when you want to donate specific items. Um, what would have been more helpful is to raise money to give to that community so that community experts within the community could identify their own community needs um, and then use the service that way. So I think it's critical to think about this topic when you're coming from outside of a community to serve within it. Uh, we are not the experts if you're working outside of your own community. Uh, the next year, the project became collecting books to donate to a smaller rural community, which was in their own state. And it was much closer to home where a number of mortar boards had grown up. And it was a response to the consolidation of the town's only two libraries. So they used experts to work within the community and identified a specific need that their service would contribute to. So this project was better adjusted to fulfilling a service recipient's needs. Another key point with purpose is partnerships. So many student organizations are already doing a lot of good work on campus. And so why not join them? Um, I mentioned that my chapter did a service engagement every month, which sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot if two of those each semester are really just you boosting another organization's project. Um, partnerships are an opportunity to save resources, collaborate with new people, and amplify voices from communities that maybe aren't present in your chapter. So you could start by looking at what clubs on campus are already doing great work, but maybe they don't receive a lot of support, or maybe they're brand new. Um, so for example, you could help advertise and collect donation items for a drive they're hosting, um, or you could do some other work to support that organization. Partnerships can also increase mortar boards visibility on your campus, and that increases your capacity to um, represent mortar board and also to continue service. So that's a little bit about purpose. Now that you wanna talk about planning, this is the investigative questions, who, what, when, where, um, you've already got your why. So now you have to plan the event, and this is a great place to exercise leadership by having members on your committee or who are other members in the chapter, you can invite them into the service by having them take an important role in the project. I think that people who are involved in planning uh, tend to care more about the work and the outputs behind the service. 
And so this is a huge boost for engagement for your chapter, which is, is something I definitely think people have been struggling with over the last few years, especially with COVID, is to engage members. Another piece of planning is to think about accessibility. So this could be like the physical accessibility of your event, but also like practicality. So even if it's not a physical event, is the service you're providing actually accessible to your target community or your target service recipients? Um, so think about the decisions you're making and whether or not the project actually works out. You know, think about the logistics and how accessible your service actually is. After you've planned the event, hopefully it goes well and it can be executed how you planned, but not everything goes according to plan, as we all know. Um, and I'm definitely an anxious person who gets nervous when things don't go kind of how you thought it out. But with service events, I think it's good to stay rooted in the mission and recognize that even if things don't go according to plan, hopefully the purpose that drove you is still something you can meet and accomplish, even if specific details didn't necessarily work out. So that's part of executing. And then finally, after the event is over, even if it's just literally over, that doesn't mean you shouldn't talk about it. So I think something my chapter did was every meeting we started with a recap of what's gone on since our last meeting. So talk about the service event, see how, what people thought, was it good? Is there room to improve? Could we do it again? Um, and you can always take notes to give to your next class of mortar board leaders so that they know if something did go well, if it didn't, Maybe this is a recurring project and they need details about how the 2023 year went. So I think it's great to take notes and pass them on. So this resource will be in the slide deck that we sent out after and also it'll be in the recording if you wanna take a look at it. We highly recommend looking at it when you're thinking about your chapter action plan, planning reading is leading and just coming up with any service projects that you want to do in your community. So I will give it over to Caitlin and we're gonna do a short activity. All right, so we're going to do a little group activity to kind of get the ideas flowing. So we're going to, in a second, break out into breakout rooms and we want everybody to brainstorm ideas. So the idea here is everybody would go around in the breakout room and throw out any ideas that they might have, and then collectively as a small group, pick an idea that you think is something that you're passionate about, something you would enjoy to do, something that is um, going to be accessible and doable for your chapter. So some things to really think about are, um, like Katie mentioned, you gotta think about, will we have the resources? What materials is this gonna require? What does the time commitment look like for a project like this? So the idea behind this activity is to just kind of uh, verbally plan out with your group what a service project could look like for um, your chapter. So we're going to break out into breakout rooms. And once you're there, um, start sharing ideas, pick an idea that you guys want to see come to life and plan out what are the steps that we can take to make this happen. And then afterwards, we'll come back to the main session and each group pick a presenter to just kind of share the idea with the group. And we'll be writing these ideas down. So if you guys ever want to come back and look at these ideas in the future, they'll always be there as a resource. All right, and as I put in the chat, before we go to breakout rooms, it's a good idea if you can take a picture of this screen, just so you know what to discuss in the breakout rooms. I tend to always forget what we're talking about. I don't know if that's just me. But we'll come back in about five minutes. So we'll say at 1050, we'll come back and share out and then do a couple of reflection questions. All right, I know we have a few groups back. I know that was probably a short amount of time to discuss all the questions, um, but hopefully it started a conversation. As I was saying, I think most people are back now. Uh, that was probably a short amount of time, but thank you for engaging with each other and hopefully you had some good conversation. So now Caitlin is gonna lead us um, or I'll go through the groups and Caitlin's going to take notes for us. So that should show up on your screen and it'll be available after as well. So if we could have group one, whoever was in room one, share first. Just a little bit, maybe like a minute, sharing out about how you guys came up with something. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Kinsey. I was in group one um, and I'm the chapter president at Purdue. 
Um, we talked about what our own chapters had been doing and went tangentially off of that. So one chapter writes cards to children in hospitals and another one does like a huge clothing drive around campus. Um, and then the one that we really liked was the this uh, book drive where students can donate their childhood books to an organization. Um, this chapter specifically donates to like a Spanish speaking um, organization. And so they uh, have students like donate their childhood books that are predominantly in English and then also raise money through alumni engagement and campus engagement to go out and also purchase books um, in Spanish. Great, thank you for sharing some of those ideas, Kenzie. Uh, do we have someone from room two? Hi, I'm Alana. I'm the chapter president at Salem College and I'll be for room two. So what we discussed was recycling bottles, cans, and tabs as a way to both help the environment and to raise funds. So Taylor was saying at her college, they have an area that sells bottled drinks and that they actually recycle those. They go through once a year and sort through them. And then they can use that money to help fund other service projects. Or if you've heard of the Shriners Hospitals for Children, they also do a similar thing with can tabs where you can donate them and they will sell them and that will help fund care for children at the hospital. So it's a great thing. It's pretty low cost because people are already buying the sodas or the bottles since they're already drinking them. And really all you have to do is kind of set up a collection area and that's something your entire campus can be involved in without, so it's great for visibility, but without having to do so much setup in the long term. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Alana. Uh, do we have someone from room three? Uh, yes, my name is Christian Tadlock. I am a collegiate member at Southern Nazarene University. And what we were talking about was kind of a park restoration or kind of a project like that. Uh, I went to a high school that did that yearly or all the way up from elementary to high school where we did that yearly and it was just kind of we're picking up trash we're doing you know planting new flowers and stuff restoring paths and essentially it was a volunteer project so people brought their own tools and supplies and what was thrown around in our uh little group was well what about partnering with another organization to help with the manpower or supply, you know, supplies and things like that, so. Great, thank you, Christian. Do we have someone from room four? Um, we'll give them a minute, uh, room five. All right, I'm pretty sure I was room five, um, but I'm Madeline. Um, I'm the communications chair for College of Charleston's chapter. Um, our group talked about uh, food security. Um, and so uh, hosting food drives and also like serving meals in the community. Um, and this would encourage food security, not just on campus, but also outside of communities as well. Um, in order to achieve this, we talked about reaching out to nonprofit organizations. Um, to collaborate with and then establishing a schedule. Um, so maybe doing this like once a month so that everybody in the chapter has a chance to volunteer uh, if they can't make it to one meeting. And then um, one person had a great idea to send thank you notes afterwards, like handwritten notes to the people um, who we collabed with as just a show of our gratitude, so. That's great, thank you, Madeline. Uh, room six. Uh, my name is Paige Austin. I'm the incoming secretary for Chapman University. Um, we talked about basically like book drives and as well as like um, uplifting the community by playing on playgrounds with students and tutoring younger students. Um, another member also explained how they would uh, their um, chapter would videotape um, themselves reading books and then they would send that to um, 
individuals who may not have access to that sort of literature. Um, another member also mentioned how after a tornado, they got together to clean up their campus um, from personal experience other with other organizations. Um, since my, our campus is so close to the beach, like we would do beach cleanups and then like have an incentive of like a beach campfire afterwards. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Paige. And then I hate to cut off uh, room four, so maybe we have a minute at the end while Ben is showing the slide, but I just wanted to share, it's great to see such diversity in all of these ideas, and I think that demonstrates how there is a wide range of service events that you can plan. And so we wanted to emphasize that it's great to plan an event, but then the next step is also engaging your chapter, which we've talked about being something kind of difficult. So also think about when you're planning these events, how would you engage your chapter? I know we heard some ideas from some of our speakers, so thank you so much for sharing those out, uh, but that's something else to keep in mind. Um, we don't have much time for questions. I will say if group four wants to share real quick, that's great. Um, Caitlin and I's contact information is on the screen, and then I do want to leave some time for Ben to put up the room, the information for the next session. Thank group you all for being four. here. I know it was quick. Group four, thank you, everyone. Go ahead, Lita. Uh, we talked about potentially have, uh, uh, collecting clothing uh, for future graduates, you know, uh, and have a closet so that they can be prepared to um, go for interviews and things of this nature. That's pretty much what we talked about. Perfect. That's great. I know a lot of campus, I know my campus had that. And then Caitlin, it sounds like, I think that was one of the service projects your chapter worked on, a career closet. Mm -hmm, a career closet. That's correct. Yes, we did. That's great. I think that's a great way to um, inspire the community to be able to create some accessibility for professional opportunities. Um, okay, I will hand it over to the next presenters. Thank you all for being here uh, for our quick session.